All right, guys, I promised you a video on how I set this up to be able to control the uh, Hyungin. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, VFD spindle to be controlled through the Open Builds black box controller and software. So my black box down there. Um, so the wiring is pretty straightforward. I'll start with the VFD. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is open it up. Um, and I should preface this. This is I'm using a 1.5 kilowatt, um, 110 volt water cooled spindle with a VFD. Here's my model number right there. It's the HY01D511B. So if you're using something different than that one, uh, steps may vary slightly, but uh, if you have the two uh, two lines right here of contacts, then it should all be pretty similar. So first thing that you need to do is bridge uh, the DCM and the forward, the FOR. Uh, you need to bridge those two together. So I just made a little jumper cable out of this, um, attach those two together. The DCM is basically a common ground, I believe, and then forward is for the direction. Um, and then the ACM line is considered a ground also, and then the VI down there with that red, small red wires going in. Uh, that is where the VFD is getting the information from the black box. So that information is passed off using a hundred and, or zero to 10 volt signal uh, that comes off of the tooling port on the back side of uh, the black box. So you can see that right here. So there, it's a four port um, connection. You're only using the two outside ones, uh, the ground and then the zero to 10, uh, the two in the middle you don't use. So you'll run those through there and then run them up into here. So uh, my green wire is the ground wire, so that goes into ACM. Red wire is the zero to 10 signal, and that goes to the VI. These other two wires are just blank. They're not plugged into anything, so just have those tucked. I didn't have any more two wire. Um, but yeah, so that's the basic wiring for this. This is a big step that I only found on one tutorial that uh, I found, or, that seem to do the trick is this little jumper right here. It's by default set on the right under VR. You need to pull that and set it to the left under VI. If you don't do that, it will not accept any information coming in from uh, this VI terminal here. So you have to do that, sorry. So yeah, make sure you do that when you do your wiring, do it while it's turned off. What that does is it disables uh, this little knob here and accepts the signal from this. So make sure you do that. Um, so yeah, back to the programming, um, yeah, I'll start over, VPD013, set that to 8, resets all the settings, go back into PD001, you're going to set that to a 1, 02, you're going to set that to a 1, and then 03, um, set that to 0, And then go into 0, 05, set that to 400. Set that. And then go back down to 0, 04 and set that to 400 also. And then if you're running the 110 volt spindle and VFD setup, you'll go into BD008. You're set this to 110. By default, it's set to 220. Uh, mine was originally set to 220, and I didn't set this. I forgot to. And I could only get to about 12,000 RPM. Once you set that to 110, it went up to 24,000. Uh, next one is PD024. You're going to set that to a 1 as well. And then PD70. Set to zero. Uh, by default, I believe that's set to one. And then 72. Set that to 400. And then 144. Set that to 3000. So once those are all set, uh, you should be in business. So, um, and then if you press the shift button when you're on this main screen and to get to the ROTT, this is your RPMs. Um, hertz, that's how many hertz it's seen uh, to control it. 
Um, and then A is for amperage, it's just showing how many amps the system's pulling while it's running. And then the ROTT is for your RPMs. Um, make sure you're in forward as well. Um, some settings you need to change in Gerbil. So if you come up here to your Gerbil settings, and then scroll down in here, you need to set what your maximum RPM is for your spindle. So if you have anything, if your spindle goes to 24,000, you want to set this to 24,000. If it goes to 10,000, you want to set it to 10,000. And then minimum spindle, set it to zero. Um, if it's anything other than zero, then you can't turn off the spindle from what I have found. Um, if there's another way around it, I don't know, but yeah, set it to zero. Um, once these two are set, then um, you'll click on your save to firmware. It'll restart the controller and then you'll be able to, to give this a go. Um, the zero to 10 volt line will need some fine tuning as well. Um, on the back of your controller, right above the, kind of hard to see here, but see that zero to 10 V is a little pot switch right above the USB connection. Um, that controls how much voltage is coming out. So what I found the easiest way to do it rather than hitting the, the ground and a zero to 10 volt line with a multimeter is just come into here once you get everything set up and go M3, S, we'll go 10,000, hit enter, so the spindle's turning on, and then you can see up here now with it set to RPMs, I'm getting 10,200. So if you're like, you know, I figured if I'm within 200 RPM, I'm fine, um, but if you're seeing, you know, like 11,000 or 9,000 or something, while this is on, you know, do it safely. Go in there and change that uh, 0 to 10 uh, pot switch and just dial that in until you're seeing as close to 10,000 RPM or whatever RPM you're asking it for um, as you can get. So as you can see, I'm 200 RPM off there, which isn't bad. And then, you know, if you come back in here, you can go in 3, 18,000, hit enter. Now it speeds itself up. And I'm still within less than 200, so I'm fine on that. And then to turn it back off, M5, enter, and it's shutting back down. So yeah, that's that. Um, I'll show you guys some other stuff real quick that I did, and I'll make a separate video for this, but I actually went into VCarve and my Gerbil controller output for SolidWorks and reprogrammed the uh, post. So that way it's automatically adding in the correct information to turn on the controller, or turn on the, uh, the spindle. So I just had it give an M8 command, which is turning on my, um, the water pump for my spindle, as well as the little um, air compressor for it. So I can show you that here. I go back into serial console. So we go M8, enter. You can see, so you can see water now moving through. Pulling the air out of the line. So that's for the spindle, and then you can hear the little air blower compressor thing. Um, by the way, if you're looking for an air compressor for a blower, highly recommend one of these. Found it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for the video. Um, I don't even think it was a couple hundred bucks. It was pretty cheap. And as you can hear, it's super quiet, and it still puts out a good amount of air. So, and you can hook it up with a misting system as well. I just haven't done that yet. Uh, and then M9 turns that all back off. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I did with the Gerbil controller, the post processor, was added in the command for M8 to turn that all on. Then an M3 command, and then pretty much all the cutting I do is done at 18,000 RPM, just because, um, to be completely honest, it's because I'm a little bit lazy. All the amount of tools that I use, um, all the speeds and feeds are based off of 18,000 RPM, so I just use that. But if you wanted to run at 24,000, you could program it in to put it in at you know S24000, and it'll run at 24,000 RPM. And then, um, now, as you noticed earlier when I was programming it, it was running, it took it a few seconds to spin up. So uh, what I did was I added a G4, which is a pause command. 
and then P for pause, and then eight seconds. So I'm allowing the machine, if I run this code, um, it'll give the start spindle command, and then it pause speed, and then it will um, continue on with the rest of the program. So that way you're not hitting go, spindle's already spinning up, and as it's spinning up, it goes in and tries to start cutting. So that's what it looks like for the V-Carve uh, G-Code. And then, I don't know if I have any G-Codes from, I'll show you the G-Code for the, from SolidWorks on another one. I don't think I have any of that um, on this computer right now. It's all on my big system. But yeah, gives you a little quick overview on that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the description below.